Guys, the pretty story that investors have been led to believe by Wall Street is that inflation has peaked and will head back down to 2% a year. The Fed has now stopped raising rates and will actually start cutting rates. And any kind of recession will be minor and we will have a soft landing. Well, if you believe that, then you have probably believed the Fed story that inflation is temporary for over a year, right up until the time they admitted that it wasn't. Also, never in the history of the Fed has any Fed chair or Fed president say, we are going to have a hard landing. But you and I know the U.S. has had many hard landing recessions. Now, with the new CPI report today, people are starting to realize that inflation is not done and that interest rates are likely to be raised higher still. So let's take a look at where we are and what the market is thinking about where the new Fed peak rate for interest rates will be for now. So here this article says core CPI rises 30 seconds straight month, headline inflation hotter than expected. The CPI increased 0.5%, the most in three months, versus 0.1% in the prior month. On an annual basis, the CPI rose 6.4% from the year-ago period versus 6.5% in December, higher than forecasts. And housing contributed the most to monthly increases in CPI, making up nearly half of the gain, while food, gasoline, and natural gas also boosted the monthly figure. So where does that leave the Fed and interest rates and terminal interest rates and cutting interest rates? Well, here we are. This is October when the so-called Fed pivot idea kind of started here. And so this green line is the second half of 2023 rate cut expectations, and it's inverted. So the lower it goes, the bigger rate cuts the market is expecting. And so as far back as November, they were expecting that by the second half of 2023, the Fed would not only stop raising rates, but start cutting by about half a percentage point. And even until the beginning of February, they believed that was true. They no longer believe that is true. And now instead of the market expecting a half a percentage point cut, now it's only expecting like 0.14% by the second half. And the red line, which is the expected terminal rate or interest rates for the Fed funds rate, meaning where the Fed will stop raising rates is now up to about 5.3 from about 4.9 just at the beginning of February. Stock market kind of reacted strangely to this news, by the way, because the NASDAQ ended up, the Dow ended down, S&P was just about flat. And the Goldman Sachs index of the most shorted stocks actually still went higher. So these are all the Kathy Wood type, no earnings kind of stocks that have been getting squeezed since basically the beginning of the year. But looking at the yield curve on the spread between the two-year and 10-year bonds, they are the most inverted since about 1981. So about a 0.86 percentage point difference between the two and the 10-year yields. And if you don't know, they get very inverted right before a recession and usually uninvert during the recession. So you see it here, 1980, uh, late 1980 over here, it's inverted and then it uninverts and you get the recession. Same here, it's inverted and then it becomes uninverted and you get this red line, the recession. Same as during the great financial crisis, it inverted, and when it uninverted, we got hit with the recessions. This is a big inversion, so you should probably expect a big recession like we had here in 1980s. And looking at this chart of the S&P 500 dividend yield versus the two-year treasury yield, when the two-year treasuries are yielding a lot more than the S&P 500 yield, that means the S&P 500 is relatively expensive. And so the S&P 500, according to this, hasn't been this expensive here, 
right? Three percentage points difference since about 2007. So either the two-year treasury yield has to go a lot lower like here, or the S&P dividend yield has to go a lot higher, and only that could happen if the price of the S&P 500 goes lower. And that's exactly what happened in the great financial crisis. The S&P dividend yield went to 4%, not because the yield went up, but the price dropped like 50%. So the Fed policy seems to be telling people straight up lies and saying, who are you going to believe, your eyes or me? So who are you going to believe, me telling you that inflation is transitory for the last year or you going to the supermarket and the gas station and seeing the price of everything going up, up, up for the last year? So that ought to tell you not to make any investment decisions based on what the Fed says, because they will not tell you the truth because they don't want to get blamed for crashing the market. So they let out little bits of truth at a time, as well as contradicting info by different Fed presidents to keep you guessing. As long as inflation stays up and interest rates rise or stay elevated, the market will stay under pressure. And the simplest way to see what elevates the stock market is just to look at a chart of the Fed balance sheet versus the S&P 500. So just take a look at this chart. This is the price of the S&P 500. This is the Fed balance sheet in trillions of dollars. So as they're buying back a whole bunch of bonds and lowering interest rates doing quantitative easing, you see their balance sheet rises. And what does that do to the stock market? It also rises. And during this period, during the temper tantrum, when they were supposed to do quantitative tightening, you see the market started going down and they had to reverse course because Wall Street said, we want that easy money. And after the pandemic, you see what happened to their balance sheet and what happened to the stock market. So this is why Wall Street wants the Fed to lower interest rates again because they want to get the market back up. If you think about it, the stock market is like an electric bike. The Fed is the battery. So as long as that battery works, it is very easy cruising when you're pedaling along, you think you're doing really well. But when that battery dies, then you realize how much of your cruising was the battery and how little of it was your pedaling. Right now, we have a dead battery on that bike. So don't end up like this poor guy who cruised too far from his home with his electric bike, but realized that he could not pedal this thing back home without the battery because it is like lugging a pile of bricks. This is where we are in the market right now. Thanks for watching, guys.